All here on your afternoon show, Kevin Cole with you. It is KEXP Seattle. I'm down in the performance space with Duran Jones and the indications. Take it away. No. 
Duran Jones and the Indications live on the afternoon show here on KEXP. Two songs from the new album, American Love Song. You just heard Morning in America and Walk Away. Again, sounding so great playing tonight at Numo's. And man, am I lucky. Uh, Most of my favorite things happening right now. Great musicians and big time music nerds, uh, record uh, collectors. (laughs) in the gatherings or in the uh, performance space here at KEXP. So I've heard that part of the story uh, of how you guys got together uh, revolved around vinyl and, uh, and record excursions, crate digging excursions. Is that, is that true? Yeah, this, uh, Aaron and I bonded over, you know, 45s and stuff. And when we were working on the first record, we would get together every Sunday and either make music or, just share records together and say, oh, look at this cool thing I found this week. And yeah, just, you know, listening to stuff uh, was a huge part of the inspiration and getting us started. And, and before that, uh, this is while you were in college, right? Yeah. Yeah. So were you, uh, did you form the band then? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what is it about vinyl that's so special? I think it's just the sense of discovery. You know, you, you come across this tactile thing and, uh, it feels uh, there's a really reward to just finding it in this natural form, you know, as it was originally presented to the world. When when uh, the debut album came out, the uh, self-titled release in 2016, what was it like to hold hold it in your hand after uh, having listened to uh, to records together and uh, bonded over music and shared uh, listening to vinyl together? Uh, it felt like holding a newborn baby. <laughs> Yeah, it totally did, you know. It was a very special moment, for sure, that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Do you remember the first time you dropped the needle on it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, what was that like? 
It was just me in the house by myself after I got off work, just dancing. Did you make sure you set the uh, the mood right, like you wanted to be alone and have that experience? Yeah, nobody was in the house. It was just me alone and, yeah, just was dancing, having a good time. It was really cool. Nice. What about uh, when the new album came out? Did it have that same kind of sense of anticipation and excitement? Well, I'm back in the countryside in Louisiana, and uh, my grandmother's record player is broken, so the first time I heard it was on my phone. So I didn't get that nostalgic <laughs> feeling, unfortunately. You were dancing around with your phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's cool. So um, you've credited uh, the success or some of the su success uh, to record store clerks who have shared your music and passionately shared your music and been sort of an evangelist for your music. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? And uh, the, as we're coming up to Record Store Day in, in a week from this Saturday, the importance of the independent record store in the life of artists. Um, yeah, the record stores were totally, uh, like, hugely instrumental in giving us our initial boost. Um, it was so much about word of mouth and about people going into the record stores um, and having clerks behind the counter that they trust dropping the needle on the record all over the country, all over the world, and people being like, what is that? And buying it and then checking it out for themselves. So, yeah, we, we owe a huge debt of gratitude uh, to all the brick and mortars out there. We love them very much, and they've been an amazing support uh, through this record push as, as well. Uh, it's been really fun to see the excitement um, that they were feeling just like we were feeling when we were gearing up to release the album. And, of course, the word of mouth around the live show, for sure. Totally. Um, okay, so who's excited about Record Store Day? Like, do you guys keep lists and, like, you know what you're going to go after the, in a week? I'm grabbing the Coal Mine Records Soul Slabs Volume 2, <laughs> um, the follow-up to their smashing uh, success of a compilation. Um, we have a a couple 45s on there, but honestly, I'm really excited for a couple of the ones that haven't even been released yet, and the only way you can get it is through uh, Slow Slabs Volume 2 Comp, so go out and get that one. Very cool. We were so uh, excited to work with them on the Delvon Lamar Organ Trio uh, release that uh, we recorded at Little London Plain uh, about a year ago, and, and, uh, and the, actually Coal Mine discovered it from the video. They, they saw the video and reached out about it, uh, putting it out. And so for us, it was an amazing honor. And then they did such a beautiful job of packaging it. It just looks so awesome. Okay, let's talk about the new, new album, American Love Call. Just a rich album, a ton of different musical influences uh, represented. And I've heard or I've read that as a band, you, you kind of think of crafting the soundscape of the record much like somebody might uh, put together a hip-hop record in terms of sampling different sounds. Um, now, can you, can you tell me about that, how, how you do that to make it your own flavor and, and uh, maybe give me an example of a, of a track and, and some of the source material or inspiration? I mean, the influence of hip hop is like a little bit different on this record than it was on the first, you know, I think on the first we were, uh, you know, using hip hop breaks in a very hip hop style. And we were essentially putting breaks like in make it change where it's just like this drum break over and over was almost like it had been sampled. And I think on this one, we were a little more conscious of it and a little bit more subtle in creating these moments that feel sample worthy without just looping it over and over like a sample. We kind of tried to uh, create a sample, but let it live the way that, you know, the original samples lived just as this one isolated moment in a song. Yeah. What, what about, uh, other parts of, uh, of the songs as they come together? I will say morning in America. So that we just performed, uh, kind of has like a sample aspect to it within its creation. Um, one of our old keyboard players who used to record all of our dress rehearsals and he recorded this little thing that he was doing uh, just as like an improvisation. And Aaron saved that. And like years later, he took this section of it, he cut it, and he looped it, and he wrote the lyrics to Morning in America. And to me, that's like the most hip hop track of the entire record. And hopefully one day we'll get 
a good MC to drop a remix on it, you know? <laughs> That'd be cool. Is that something you've uh, thought about or you want to do or you've definitely asked anybody to do? That's... Shout out to all the MCs out there. <laughs> <laughs> right on. That song really struck me, uh, well, every time I've heard it and then just hearing it live now, um, especially since I just played Marvin Gaye coming into the set, uh, man, how relevant the lyrics are. Uh, to this day, um, you know, sort of like Marvin Gaye's What's Going On um, record and the social commentary on that record and, you know, how those themes are still um, prevalent and need to be addressed today. And you think you kind of are moving forward, but it's always a couple steps forward and a couple steps back. Yes, indeed. We're living in crazy times right now. And as Nina Simone said perfectly, you know, you can't be an artist without reflecting the times that we live in. It's crazy right now. And, you know, I'm, I'm very glad and, and very thankful that I have the band, the indications that are willing to step out and make a message for social political consciousness. So, As are we. I mean, um, we need to hear it. And uh, so thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you. Um, it's Duran Jones and the Indications live here on KEXP. Again, playing at Numos tonight, then heading on over, uh, heading east, Salt Lake City, Denver, Minneapolis, Chicago. And uh, how about a couple more songs here? Sure, this next one is titled Long Way Home.
It's a long way So beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Duran Jones and the indications and a couple of uh, true loves in the house here uh, as well. Indications today, are you, uh, is this a, a KEXP treat, a Seattle treat? You playing tonight or are you on the road with uh, the band? This is a coal mine family thing. Yeah. A, a coal mine family thing. Um, before we uh, uh, call it quits here, would one of you who's close to a mic, whoever wants to, introduce the band? Sure, we got Steve Okonski on the keys and the vocals as well. Blake Ryan on the guitar and vocals. Myself, Duran Jones, speaking right here, just on the vocals today. And then on drums and vocals, we have Aaron Fraser on bass guitar. Give it up for Cal Hout. On trombone, we have Jason Creasy. And... On tenor saxophone, we have Mr. Gordon Brown. And we're so thankful that they joined us for these songs. Uh, yeah, anybody who's listening right now, they're going to join us on stage for a couple of songs tonight, too. It's awesome to have the true loves, to have the, the coal mine family, you know, so willing to hop on and jam with us. Yeah, and it's awesome having you here. So thank you so thank much. Thank you. It's Duran Jones and the Indications again playing at Numos tonight in uh, Salt Lake City, Denver, Minneapolis, Chicago. And uh, uh, again, thank you and huge thanks to the KEXP audio uh, video team. Uh, Jim, Justin, Scott, Alia, Matt, uh, Ansley, Kevin, Nikhil, Amber, Allison, Kelsey, and all the uh, donors that make these live sessions on KEXP possible because it is listener-powered KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.